trip to the postseason by winning the AL East and National League Central, respectively. In 2011, both teams are once again in the hunt. Tampa Bay boasting one of the best rotations in baseball, and Cincinnati powered by the best offense in the National League. Tonight, they square off in an interleague showdown on Sun Sports. Give you to Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. The Rays return home after a six-game road trip. And tonight, begin a six-game stand here. The first club in, the Cincinnati Reds. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to another evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson. I'm Dwayne Stats. Todd Callis with us tonight again as well. Interleague baseball continuing tonight. The Rays off this great road trip. A supercharged offensive road trip, if you will. Coming off scoring 14 runs yesterday in Houston, and they have been supercharged by the middle of the lineup, starting with Evan Longoria and B.J. Upton. Yeah, those two guys getting hot is what everybody with the, with the Rays is excited about. Evan Longoria, he ditches the batting gloves, and boy, did he have a, have a heck of a series against the Astros. Eight out of 14, the three home runs, 10 RBIs. He also scored six runs. We saw an Evan Longoria much more aggressive at the plate, had a, had a consistent approach, exactly what you're looking for from your big guy right in the middle of the lineup, and the Rays obviously... Hope that continues here against Reds pitching. And how about B.J. Upton? Talk about consistency. A home run in each ball game. Early, it was the, the game plan was to pound him in. He turned a couple of those around. And then in that last game, falling behind 2-0, knows he's going to get a fastball out over the plate, takes full advantage of it. He goes 5 for 12 in the series. The three home runs, the seven RBIs, also had a couple of stolen bases. That's exactly what you need. And hopefully, this is what jump starts the rest of that Rays offense. Well, the Rays are 9-3 and three in interleague play, and they'll tangle with the top offense in the National League tonight. Cincinnati Reds leading the National League in runs scored. Yeah, well, and you got Joey Votto. Joey Votto in the three-hole. This is a guy that's fresh off the reigning National League MVP. He hit 37 home runs last year, drove in 113, and you see not much drop-off. The average fourth in the National League. A lot of walks. Obviously, that leads to the on-base percentage. He's also, uh, you know, in the top 10 in RBIs with 49. He's a guy that you just don't want to let Joey Votto beat you. And he's coming off a series in Baltimore where he went four for 12, hit a couple of home runs in that series and drove in six. And you think of the Cincinnati ballpark as being a hitter's park. He's even better away from their home ballpark. Jeremy Hellickson will go to the mound tonight for the Rays trying to stop this Cincinnati Reds lineup. And when we come back, Todd Callis will take a close look at the rookie right-hander, Jeremy Hellickson. Start of the year had a ton of run support in his first 11, but not so much his last three as he gets ready for the Reds tonight to kick off a three game series. Hellickson has pitched very well here at Chuff Field on this season as he goes again tonight against the Reds. You know, you see so far in five starts, a 2 5 2 ERA for Hellickson at home and a 183 opponent's batting average against. Hellickson will take on the Cincinnati Reds for the first time, and Mike Leak will be his. Opponent on the mound for Cincinnati. When you talk about our Coventry healthcare pitching matchup, you'll see that Leak at 12 starts has a 6 and 4 mark and a 4-1-9 ERA. Hellickson with that ERA just above three. We asked Jeremy about facing a team that's never seen him before and how he prepares any differently. I'll go in and, and get their lineup up and I mean I know I've faced a few of their guys before. Um, and they got a good lineup, so just kind of watch the video on our own and and let uh, let Hick do his job and, and go from there. 
So Hellickson's fired up. One thing that he said, though, is his changeup can be very much an effective pitch against a team that's never seen him before. We'll see how much he breaks it out today ahead of the count against the Reds. We're ready for baseball. It's Monday night. Dwayne Stads and Brian Anderson will have all the action in high definition next. All tonight brought to you by AT&T. Auto Way. Auto Way is part of Auto Nation, the largest automotive retailer in the country, so we can do big things. By Tires Plus, the plus is in everything we do. And by Toyota, moving forward. Now the Rays meet the Cincinnati Reds as interleague play continues tonight from Tropicana Field. The Rays have not seen this club since 2005 in Cincinnati. And they have not played them here at Tropicana Field since 2003. And here is the starting lineup put together by Dusty Baker. Fred Lewis leads off, followed by Brandon Phillips. Joey Votto, the number three hitter at first. And Scott Rowland will hit cleanup in front of Jay Bruce, the right fielder. Johnny Gomes, the former Ray, in the lineup. He'll be the DH. Ramon Hernandez will catch. Batting eighth in center field is Drew Stubbs. Paul Yanish is the shortstop, and he will bat ninth. Now making his 15th start of the season, right-hander Jeremy Hellickson. One complete game, the record 7-6 and six ERA, just over three. His last couple of times out, he has been involved in a couple of pitcher's duels. Was outdueled by Zach Greinke. His last start, the previous start, outdueled by Josh Beckett. He'll be looking to get the upper hand tonight against Mike Lee. There's Joe Madden, the Rays skipper, coming off this 5-1 interleague road trip. And Dusty Baker, fourth season as the skipper of the Cincinnati Reds. They were 91-71 and 71 last year. And here's Fred Lewis, the left fielder. The first pitch of the game is fouled right back. He went after the opening fastball. And that's a strike. Lewis at 267 with a home run and 10 runs batted in. The Rays saw him when he was a member of the Toronto Blue Jays. He went wide. Yeah, and that first pitch of the ball game, uh, he brought that Toronto Blue Jay approach. <laughs> Come out did. swinging. And you'll see a lot of teams do that off Jeremy Hellickson. Well, word gets around about a pitcher like Hellickson. A bunt attempt is fouled, one and two. And they're not uh, of a mind where they want to fall behind a guy who can deliver the changeup the way he does. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. And, and you know, we've from time to time highlighted that differential in the first two pitches and anything after. Well, the disparity is actually growing. You know, you look at first two pitches again now, teams are hitting 376. Anything after the first two, just 133. And seven of the nine home runs he's given up have been on the first two pitches. One, two delivery upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. So experience tells us that the, the deeper the count goes, the better off that is for Hellickson. And that's just the reverse of what is usually the case for a pitcher. Yeah, and it's because Hellickson will throw his pitches to both sides of the plate. He gets deep into a count, moves the ball around. Two is pop foul, the changeup. Head about in front a little bit, and he fouls it out of play. Yeah, you know, he'll, he may start off in that bat with a fastball away and then a change up. And once you start getting into the count, all of a sudden he'll throw one in and then a change up in, then maybe a fastball back out away. He really does a nice job of mixing and matching his pitches and the locations he throws. 2 2 again. And a base hit back through the middle. So Lewis singles into center field to start this game. Now let's take a look at the Rays defense as it lines up behind Jeremy tonight. In the outfield, left to right, Sam Fold, B.J. Upton, and Matt Joyce across the infield. Third to first, Evan Longoria, Reed Brignac, Ben Zobris, and Casey Kochman, John Jaso. Behind the play. Brandon Phillips, a National League All-Star last year, steps in, hitting out of the second spot. And he's 
riding a little six game hitting streak coming in. Pitch, and that's in there. Runner at first, and nobody out. The Reds are a game over 500 at 40 and 39. Sharing third place with Pittsburgh in the National League Central. Four games behind the Milwaukee Brewers. Pitch starts down, breaking ball. I would expect, too, with a, with a hitter like Brandon Phillips, I would expect Jeremy Hellickson to feature a lot of off-speed, especially the changeup against Phillips. Number one, he's very aggressive. Number two, you see that bat waving back and forth. It's the guys who are really still that have the best chance against Jeremy Hellickson's changeup. And there's a lot of movement, a lot of timing involved in your mechanics. That's where that changeup can really exploit the weaknesses. When he takes the changeup too close, Two and one. The Reds, for about a month to six weeks, have more or less been treading water over in the National League. Outstanding offense. They lead the league with runs scored, 383. They're 14th in team earned run average, however. Over to first, and Lewis is back in. And you look at the overall team numbers of the Cincinnati Reds, and it becomes quite apparent very quickly that they are an offensive team. They win and die by what they're able to do from the batter's box. Any kind of pitching whatsoever, and going to be a solid ball club because they are right at the top of the league in just about every offensive category. Well, there you see they've got a pretty good lead. And runs scored over St. Louis and Arizona in the National League. They'll draw walks, they'll hit homers. Phillips takes a pitch inside. Oh, that's exactly what we've seen with Jeremy Hellickson with Brandon Phillips attacking him with the off speed. We saw the curveball and then a few changeups. The problem is right now just not commanding it. Now when you look at the Reds, you're talking about their offense. They're second in on-base percentage, and they lead the league in home runs, and that's a, enough said right there. They're going to score some runs. Yes. Now the 3-1, a big swing and a miss. Came in with a fastball 3-1 that time. Well located fastball. Brandon Phillips 3-1 count. Watch him pull off this pitch. Right on the corner. Look at that front hip open up. He's trying to jack. This pulls off. Jeremy gets the strike. Lewis at first. A full count on Phillips. Lewis is on the move and the ball is hit deep to center field. Upton's going to have to go back, still on the track, and it's going to be out of his reach. It will one hop to the wall, and they're going to wave the runner home. Lewis will score standing on a double to center field by Phillips, and Cincinnati takes a 1 0 lead. Well, Brandon Phillips right here does get the change up, and look where this thing ends up middle, middle. Brandon Phillips makes solid contact. Anytime you get a fly ball over the head of B.J. Upton when he's running like that, you got a hold of it. Put some, put a good solid swing on it. Really drove that ball. Fred Lewis in his speed, he scores easily. Now here's Joey Votto. He's fourth in the National League in hitting. And the pitch is a strike. First pitch fastball. Eleven homers and 49 runs batted in for Votto, and he leads the National League hitting 
with runners in scoring position. He's got one at second right now with nobody out. He's hitting 435 with runners in scoring position. And that's a strike. 2 fastball there. And that would be the National League leaders with the runners on and in scoring position. But well, makes sense that that is a uh, clutch player statistic right there and this is your reigning National League most valuable player put up huge numbers last year. His feet, a nice pickup by Jaso. Jeremy Hellickson, right now, the command not quite where he wants it to be. He yanked that fastball in, but I do like him going with the back to back fastballs. You know what makes the changeup so effective is the establishing of the fastball. I think that's where he got into a little trouble with Brandon Phillips, threw in so many off speed that Phillips only saw really one fastball in that at bat. Called one and two to Votto. Hit 37 home runs last year. There would be the MVP numbers on him, leading the National League in slugging percentage and on base percentage a year ago. That ball in on him, a little liner down to third and caught by Longoria. No chance to double up Phillips, who ducks back in at second. Hellickson here comes with the fastball again in, gets it in there nicely. You see how it really tied up Votto on that swing. Just really got in there, just a soft little looper to Evan down there at third. That's a clutch pitch. Brings up Scott Rowland, 35 year old third baseman. For the change up, strike one. A foul back. So a change up and a fastball, two strikes. Roland had some shoulder and neck issues early. They disabled this at the end of April. Eight time gold glove winner. One last year. Ground ball third. Longoria now goes to first. The throw is low, but it's picked up by Kochman. And the Longoria bobbled it and actually had Phillips almost running right at him and uh, Roland is out at first as Longoria decided to go that way. Yeah Phillips couldn't make his mind up what he wanted to do hard hit ground ball and Evan just play he typically makes pretty clean just bounced out he was able to recover and get the out but you watch Phillips right here he's going to go. Yeah if Evan peeks down there towards second I think they got to real chance to get him in a rundown get him out the problem was he was too worried about getting the out after the claim Jay Bruce the pitch is down it's like being a it's like being a quarterback you know you, you bounce that ball out, out of your glove and then you're trying to recover get it to make a throw and that internal clock is going off in your head and you realize I got to get this and get it over there if I have any chance at an out not even worried about Phillips didn't have time Bruce Takes a firm fastball for a strike. Bruce, the fourth leading home run hitter in the National League with 17. 274. And he can thank that to the month of May. He was the NL player of the month and hit 12 in May. Two balls and a strike. But he's got some pop. He's a big strikeout guy. But he also is. A power guy. 
Well, they need somebody to step in for Adam Dunn. <laughs> yeah, he was both of those. There's a line drive and a base hit into right against the shift. That's going to score Phillips, and it's two to nothing Cincinnati as Jay Bruce drives in his 50th run of the year. A two run first for the Reds. Well, there it is. Change up off the end of the bat, but. Like you said, a lot of power, very strong to be able to go out that far, get it off the end of the bat, and then pull it against the shift and get it past the outstretched arms of Ben Zobers right there and into right field. And Johnny Gomes steps in. He's the DH. And Gomes got a nice applause as he prepares to bat for the first time in this game. takes the pitch and that's in there strike one so two runs three hits for Cincinnati and two of the hits off changeups Brandon Phillips saw a steady diet and got one and Jay Bruce got the other to his left makes the catch and that retires the side two runs three hits a man left Rays coming in to hit down by two runs down Joe Madden will put his lineup out there this way the DH is going to be Johnny Damon leading off followed by Ben Zobris and Evan Longoria Matt Joyce hits cleanup Casey Cotsman at first with PJ Upton at center field John Jaso bat seventh in front of the left fielder Sam Bold, Reed Brignac is the shortstop. He'll hit ninth. Well, making his 13th start of the season, right-hander Mike Lee. You can see he's had three appearances out of the bullpen. That came in the, er the early to middle part of May. He then went down for a two-game stint at Louisville. And since he's come back, he's thrown the ball very well. He's 3-2 and two with a 2.85 in the six starts since returning. So the right-hander out of Fallbrook, California. To Arizona State. The first pitch is low and outside. A ball and no strikes. Two and nothing. A little more trouble against lefties than right-handers. Damon rolls it foul. Two and one, and Johnny Damon got into the act in that series in Houston. Damon yesterday with four hits. So he's 72nd on the list, three behind Ted Williams. Popper foul the other way. So it's a two and two count. Take it to three balls and two strikes. Well, Mike Leak, the right hander, he's got a good sinker, ground ball pitcher. Features the fastball, he'll cut it. Slider, curveball, changeup. Throws them all. There's a foul ball. If you get a guy who can break that uh, pitch into you as a left handed hitter, there's a pretty good chance that uh, you're going to foul one or two off your feet. And that's exactly what he does. It's not been effective. His command hasn't been there, but you're right, Dwayne. He's got the cutter moving in, the sinker moving away. Oh, bouncing ball, foul right there. Yeah, we've seen a couple of those cutters really get in on the hands of Johnny Damon. So you're worried about Leak's sinker. You know, he lines himself up way over on the first base side of the rubber in order to maximize that sink to the outside corner and easier for him to get that cutter in. And there is strike three call. Damon out on strikes looking. And how about that? He throws the sinker away, the cutter in, the sinker away, the cutter in, and then how about the sinker in? Gives up on it. Johnny Damon think of that cutter coming in on the hands. He gives up on it. It sinks right back, catches the inner third. Good pitch. 
That's called setting a hitter up. Now Ben Zobris steps in. Takes the pitch a little bit inside. One and oh. Two and oh the count. Two balls, no strikes. There it is, a called strike, two and one. Leak out of Arizona State and uh, went right to the major leagues. It's now three and one. It was eight and four last year with Cincinnati. 22 starts. The just over 138 innings and gave up 158 hits. And there's a hit up the right side headed toward the corner. Bruce will play the carom. Zobrist around second and they're going to stop him there. Ben had an idea about three. He was taking a peek at Tom Foley and he was heading into second base. Stopped there with his 26th double of the year. He'll take over the American League lead in doubles with this one. Now Mike Leach just trying to throw a, a strike here in a bad count. Ben Zobers just reaches out, gets it, gets it into the corner. See him round right here, and he's got a real chance. But little indecision right there cost him. Play it safe, stay at second base. You're still out in scoring position here for Evan Longoria. Who's coming off that huge series in Houston is red hot. Evan hitting 253 now. Takes the pitch down, a ball and no strikes. Well, he comes out of Houston with three home runs in the series and 10 runs batted in. At 14 road trip, or 14 RBIs on the road trip. And the Rays won five out of six. He's under it and pops it up. Again from third base, the Gold Glove third baseman, two gone. Now let's take a look at the Cincinnati defense as it lines up tonight. Left and right in the outfield, Fred Lewis, Drew Stubbs, and Jay Bruce. Across the infield, third to first, Scott Rowland, Paul Yanish, Brandon Phillips, and Joey Votto. Ramon Hernandez will be handling the catching duties. So Matt Joyce steps in here. He's going to take a two out hit to get the run home. Phillips shaded toward the hole, and the shortstop, Yanish, shaded toward the middle. And this pitch is popped up. Yanish under this one and makes the catch. No runs ahead. One left. We're through an inning. Two to nothing, Cincinnati. Ball club won the National League Central last year. Finishing ahead of the Cardinals with 91 wins and 71 losses. And then... Ran into Roy Halladay. And Roy Halladay, I mean, what can you say? Playoff game? Go out there and do what he did. That was an exciting ball game to watch. Just moving the ball around, doing what he does. Sink it, cut it. How about this? Avoid the bat and have to make that play. Roy Halladay. Don Larson is perfect game in 1956. The only other no-hitter in postseason history in the major leagues and Roy Halladay who had no hitter against Cincinnati last year. But he picked a, a pretty good club. I mean, they led the league last year as they do this year in a number of offensive categories. Ball one to Ramon Hernandez. They led the National League in home runs and uh, in runs scored on a per game basis of the league in hitting, but not against Roy Halladay. And in that setting, I mean, a no hitter in the big leagues, how special? I mean, that that's something that uh, rare enough in the postseason, unbelievable. Hellickson with a fastball, falls behind in the count here to Hernandez. Three balls, no strikes. There's a 
first strike. Well, if there was one concern about Jeremy Hellickson, you know, we broke down, you know, in the pregame, talking about his first 11 starts were so very good. His last three, he's lost all three. Well, he's only really pitched poorly in one of those starts, and that was in Baltimore. But it's that his walks have started to go up. Strikeouts have come way down. And the 3-1 pitch is lifted deep to center. Well, Upton to have room. He's feeling for the wall, and he makes the catch. DJ got back there on the track and started to extend that right arm to get a sense of how far he had left before he hit the wall, and he makes that catch. Uh, when he's going back that far, usually it's in a full sprint. He knows where the wall is based on his stride, but you're right, Dwayne. He's kind of drifting, drifting, then reach, jump and catch. One away. Stubbs takes a strike. Stubbs with 11 home runs. The top strikeout guy in the National League with 105 strikeouts. Hitting 254. He has some power, he has some speed. Out of play, foul down the left side. Take a look at uh, what you're talking about here with regard to Hellickson. Well, you, you see the first 11, the last three. It's right here, right here. Strikeouts per nine, 6.3 to 3.4. That's almost three strikeouts per nine innings less. And then, of course, you see the 3.5 to 4.3. The walks have started to creep up a little bit. Those were the numbers I'd be concerned about, not so much the 0 and 3. See the run support, not a whole lot of that. And really, like I said, only one bad start. And Stubbs is out on strikes, missed the curveball. That's the first strikeout for Hellickson tonight. Well, this is a good curveball here by Hellickson. See that ball start up above the knees and then really bottom out right to the dirt. The shortstop. Pitch to him is over but low. A fastball, one ball and no strikes. He shoots it toward the gap. Right center field. BJ's going to cut it off. Yanni started to make a big turn and then hesitated. Kind of slipped for just a second there. And Upton holds him to a single. Now that's exactly how you do it. Giannis right there with that base hit out into right center field. You leave the batter's box with the idea you're going for two all the time. Force the defense to make a play, make a throw. Hard out of the box makes the, the hard turn. There's a little slip you're talking about, Dwayne, but he forced the throw in by BJ. And what you do is you force the defender to have to come up with the ball like that, turn and throw it in. No lollipop. Aggressive style of baseball from Dusty Baker's squad. That's the top of the order again. Fred Lewis takes it low. Yanni aboard on the two-out single. And I guess that's to be expected. Your, your team's going to be aggressive if your manager wears wristbands and chews on a toothpick all the time. I mean, and you can forget the toothpick, but how about the wristbands? Yep. May activate himself. Well, uh, something's working. You know, that the postseason trip last year, it's the fourth division championship for Dusty Baker with three different teams. Longtime manager of the uh, Giants, of course. Went to the postseason twice with them, once with the Cubs, and once with Cincinnati. That's where I got all of my experience playing against Dusty Baker with the Diamondbacks. He was, of course, with the Giants, and he was the one manager that when I would face his ball club, I knew that because he didn't want me to be able to get the fastball away and establish that and then be able to have that changeup come into play, he would stagger his lineup. So he would go lefty-righty, lefty-righty, lefty-righty all the way down the lineup. So it would continue to force me to move to each side of the plate for each hitter. Made it difficult. 
pitch a little bit wide. It's three balls and no strikes. So kind of a personal as well as a professional irritant to <laughs> Yes, he was. I mean, because you would have those lineups that would come out nine righties. Okay, fine. Let me establish my fastball down and away, pop a few in, change up, you'd run right through them. Well, all of a sudden, if everybody was staggered, it forced you, okay, fastball down and away, arm side one time, glove side the next, made it difficult. And that fastball missed for ball four. A couple of pitches close in there. So he kept the ball away and walks Lewis. He continues to work Lewis away. These pitches just off the plate. Jim Hickey coming out to encourage his young starter. Give up a two out hit and then a walk. You want to make sure that you're making that second swing through the lineup and you're starting to get into that danger zone. You got Phillips, then Votto, then Roland. You don't want this game to get out of hand early. Yeah, I mean, he made 25 pitches in the first, and so here he is at 40 pitches now and hitting in two thirds in. And he's going to have to deal with Brandon Phillips. Yeah. So. And we saw what he did in his last at bat. Absolutely. He had a changeup all the way back into center field over Upton's head. So a big spot in this game already. Raised down two to nothing, and the Reds have two men on base. This developing with two outs. And the big cut. And Phillips was thinking about long ball there, ready to try to jack one out. Well, where he got the chain. Yeah, when he stayed on it in that first at bat, right here, you're right, Dwayne. He is looking to make this a five run lead. His way off. Ball in a bit, fouled away, and the count is two strikes. Well, that's a pitch that Brandon Phillips wanted to drive, and it was in a spot where he really could have turned on that pitch. However, the changeup before slows him down just a little bit. You throw that changeup, he's way out in front, so now he sits back just a tick longer, and that fastball ends up beating him just a hair when that was a good pitch to drive. Ball, change up, fastball and curveball. And Phillips is out on strikes. Reds lead two. Ball game moves to the home half of the inning. It's two to nothing Cincinnati. See, Kochman, beginning of the year, wasn't even with the team, then wasn't playing every day because Dan Johnson was here. So even though he's hitting so well with that 343 average, he hasn't qualified yet for the top 10 in the American League at hitting. As you can see, he needs 21 more plate appearances, and he has to average more than 3.1 plate appearances per team game to qualify. Right now, he'd be second to only Adrian Gonzalez. All of that, and he's leading off here in the bottom of the second inning, taking a breaking ball down. One ball, no strikes. Kochman, Upton, and Jaso. Casey, valuable to the club for the offense, but uh, his ultimate value is the defense that he can give the Rays at first, and the fact that he's hitting enough to be in there every day. Well, he's hitting more than enough to be in there every day. That was the strike two and one. Yeah, that was the one thing that Rays knew that they were getting was the defense and the fact that he can pick it over there and really good hands. He comes in with strike two. The, the, off two. the offense has been the, the pleasant surprise. And it's not just like you said, offense enough to keep him in the lineup. I mean, this guy got a chance to go right to the head of the board here with a few more at-bats. And he's been doing it. You know, you could see the confidence grow, too, because early in the season, it was a lot of, you know, singles and, and moving the ball the other way and some ground ball hits. He had a bunch of infield hits. But, boy, as of late, he's been driving the baseball to both, you know, both gaps, left center, right center. The other thing he does is what he just did with that last pitch. He takes this one on the inside corner while just picking up the strike zone. But he has defeated a lot of pitches. He fouled that last pitch away before taking 
the call third strike. Yeah, he just got frozen right there with a perfect fastball on the inside corner. And you're right, Dwayne. Casey Kochman is a very good hitter with two strikes. And if he gets a pitch that's close, he usually takes a swing at it, tries to foul it off, spoil it a little bit. But that's called, uh, when they talk about locking a hitter up, freezing a guy, that's it. Jay Upton pitch down and away. Mike Leake showing the fastball in the low 90s, 91, 92. The strike. Cutter in the upper 80s. BJ makes a big cut and misses right there on a pitch moving away from him. And where a lot of right-handed pitchers and vice versa, left-handed pitchers will not throw the cutter the same side batter leak will and that was a front go well no that was just a four seamer but he will throw the cutter to righties you see a lot of that in on the lefties we saw it with Johnny Damon in fact there are times when he'll throw that cutter more times to a right-handed hitter in a game that he will just the regular fastball yeah he strikes out Upton he had that little movement away with that one Three strikeouts now for Mike Lee. Well, he's got a very good cutter, and that's why he uses it so much. He uses it against the lefties to try to take that ball from the barrel of the bat to the handle. He uses it against the righties to try to take that ball from the barrel of the bat to the end of the bat. Either way, you get the bad contact, you break a lot of bats, you get a lot of easy outs. John Jaso, swing and a miss. It's a strike. Tracking that one all the way from his perch at first base. Jaso had a good look right down the line, and it was foul. A long strike, and the count is 0 2. There's another one. Same spot. And that one is foul. Only a little deeper that time. <laughs> he almost wow. went back wall. They tried to come in there with that same fastball they got Kochman on. Look at Jaso throw those hands through quick. That ball was blister. The 0-2 pitch is away. Side two and two. It was key for Leak to get through the first inning. Uh, this starting staff for the Reds collectively having a difficult time in the first. The team ERA is over 660 in the first inning. And the Rays left a man at second base in the first. Zobras doubled with one out and was stranded there. Second, Phillips up with it. His toss to first. The Rays are up and down. Two strikeouts and a ground ball. On to the third. Two nothing. Cincinnati. Be sure to tune in on Friday, July the first, for the 2011 Rays broadcast auction to benefit the Rays Baseball Foundation, the Tampa General Hospital Children's Medical Center. Rays will auction off one-of-a-kind experiences with your favorite Rays players, including hitting lessons with Johnny Damon, exclusive ticket packages, a trip to the All-Star Game and more and in fact you can go on the website tomorrow raisebaseball.com slash auctions and get a preview of the auction items and also purchase tickets to the Rays summer social joe madden's summer social Votto going after the first pitch and popping it into shallow left will be handled by sam fold for the out yeah it's a good idea to go on there as, as soon as they become available there are a limited number of those for a joe madden summer social they're going to uh, limit them to just 200, and that's a that's turned out to be a great event. 
and they're first come first serve so as soon as they go on sale on the website grab them and you may want to hurry because Dwayne and I have an in it's already down to 190 <laughs> we've had friends <laughs> Scott Rowland takes the pitch down and away one ball no strikes so hurry just a limited number remaining the strike and, and the count is one and one. And so that starts tomorrow. So we may need to get a time for him later in the ball. This this could be one of those where people start to line up. Black Friday, if you will. Yeah, it's racebaseball.com slash auctions. Broadcast auction. Got to put the broadcast in there now. That'll be available tomorrow. Outside, two and two. Well, you get a chance to uh, spend time with Joe Madden and uh, the players. We like to slip in there with uh, the advance tickets that we get a chance <laughs> to buy. Well, that's why we buy them, so people talk to us. We pay for the ticket. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have somebody to have a copy. Hey, listen, I was I was there last year. Okay, I went to that last year, and I might as well have been wallpaper. So now it's great. We, no, oh, I mean for me. So oh, that's why I'm buying those tickets. Uh, people come, and now I can glad hand. I look uh, like I know people. <laughs> Three, two is shot up the right side. That's going to be foul. Well, I know how to play the game now. You know, you've always known that. It's just instinctive. This is just a different game. <laughs> They're all the same. 3 2 the count here to Scott Rowland. And a cut and a miss. He's out of there. Second strikeout for Hellickson. Two up, two down here in the third. Well, that's an impressive pitch by Jeremy Hellickson. He's able to command that changeup to the other side of the plate. Look at that. Although the way John Jason was reaching for it, I don't know if he wanted it to the other side of the plate, but regardless, it was effective. And now Jay Bruce, 24-year-old outfielder. Bounces it back. The Rays have the shift on for him. Sobrist in short right field. There's Ben there. He was able to get that base hit to Ben's right in his last at bat that drove in the red second run. He's cut it a fastball and fouls it back. 0 2. Ellickson made 43 pitches through the first two innings. Retired the first two men in the third, as he did in the second before he ran into a little bit of a jam, but got out of that one. Two strike pitch. Just a piece of it toward the on deck circle where Johnny Gomes was taking a practice cut. Took a swing at that one. Proving it just how much he loves to swing the bat. Strike pitch again. Hello. The other thing about the recent starts from Hellickson, he hasn't got any support at all to speak of. Before those first 11 starts, he was getting seven and a half runs or better support. Over half a run in the last three starts for him. Roller picked up by Zobrist in short right. They throw him out. One, two, three, go the Reds. Two to nothing, Cincinnati. Cincinnati with a couple first inning runs. And don't forget, in the game tonight, and all season tires plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every raised home run televised on Sun Sports and Fox Sports Florida. Sam Fold will lead it off here for the Rays in the bottom of the third.
pitch is low. One ball, no strikes. Sam at 241. Really had that uh, breakout first month, then he struggled. He's been good in the month of June. He's ahead in the count, 2 0. Oh. Two balls and a strike. 324 for the month of June. Sam Fold. Now three balls and a strike. And when Sam Fold is productive with the bat, it makes the Rays a much better team. Defensively, having his glove out there, he's aggressive on the base pads. Bounds it off his foot. So the count's three and two. That three one cutter and the dogs are barking that you know the, the left handed hitter they see that ball out over the plate their eyes they see it coming in tells them where to swing they go to swing there's that late cutting action just a little bit and all of a sudden instead of off the barrel it's a little bit further down and you'll yank it right into your foot foul the other way it's headed out of play Mike Leak on the mound for Cincinnati he well, camp. He started the season in the starting rotation because of injuries. And uh, Homer Bailey and Johnny Cueto, who's going to pitch tomorrow, both on the disabled list. This one rolls to Phillips in second, and he makes the play easily. One away. So, Leak was in the rotation and made the couple of relief appearances and then was optioned to Louisville in the uh, middle of May. Made a couple of appearances down there and came back to the Reds. He was hoping and actually planning once he had made the club. He had a chance to be one of those guys who was strike to Brignac who would never play in the minor leagues. He came right from Arizona State with the Reds last year did not play in the minors roller Phillips has this one of the toss but he got sent down and so he's got at least a few days of minor league experience under his belt yeah just over seven innings down there and since he's come back he's thrown the ball extremely well he's had six starts three and two with the two eight five now his the two losses were in his last two starts and they were both against American League East teams he lost to Toronto lost to New York and in those starts his ERA was approaching five, but the first four back, he was lights out. Johnny David takes a pitch down. Damon went to 3 2, extended the at bat to eight pitches. Was called out on strikes on a pitch in on him in the first inning on the corner. That was a really good sequence by Leak. He was going with the cutters in, the sinkers away, deep into the count, and all of a sudden through that four seam with a little bit of run on the inside corner, and Johnny Damon locked up. Well, Johnny's ahead of the count, three balls and a strike. There you go, the. Uh... Last outing was Wednesday against the Yankees. Prior to that, against the Blue Jays, and a total of seven runs allowed in those two starts. A little popper. Phillips out from second will handle it. The Rays are up and down. One, two, three. On to the fourth. Two to nothing, Cincinnati. Field tonight. The Reds leading two nothing as we head to the fourth. Now, the second longest home run ever hit at Tropicana Field landed right about here and actually rolled on top of the. Batters Eye Restaurant it ended up right around here. They used to have the lineups posted here. Let's take a look at that. 474 feet. Ended up being a walk-off home run against the Tigers and Troy Percival, July 9th of 2005. Ended a long losing streak for the Rays. And to this day, Gomes still very upset by the people that measure home runs here that he does not have the longest home run, which belongs to Vinny Castilla at 478 feet. But not bad, guys. 474 from Gomes about six years ago. Gentlemen. 
And here he is to lead off the fourth inning in a Cincinnati Reds uniform. Welcome back by some of the fans dating back to the 05 season when he hit that tape measure home run. He lifts a high fly ball into left on the first pitch. Bold is all the way back to the wall, and that ball is a home run. It hit the catwalk out there and then came back down. And so on the first pitch here in the fourth, Johnny Gomes has hit a home run as 11th of the year. And that's going to make it three to nothing. Well, when they tell you that a hitter will let you know, Johnny Damon let everybody know on that. He got a curveball, a hanger. Wants it away, stays middle in. That is well struck. And the reaction. He knows it. Ramon Hernandez takes a pitch, and that's off the plate away. One ball, no strikes. The tenth home run of the year given up by Hellickson. Two and zero. Oh. So two runs in the first. Run here in the fourth inning with Gomes hitting it out. Gomes and a strike. Three runs, five hits, surrendered by Hellickson for the walk and a couple strikeouts in the mix. Cut and a miss, Hernandez out on strikes. Got him with a change up. Yeah, a couple of good ones. Strike two away. And strike three caught a lot of plate, but fooled him with the speed change. Watch him really pull off this way out in front. This one and bounces it foul for a strike. Stubbs struck out, missed a curveball his first time. Striking out for the 106th time this year. One and one to count. Stubbs out of the University of Texas. Which is low, two and one. He was born in Atlanta, but it's Atlanta, Texas. That went to school in Austin. Got to the big leagues of the Reds in 09 at 267. 22 home runs last year, and this is another off speed pitch. Change up, the count is two and two. Six years old. And the pitch 
Smith's missed a bit in. And a full count. That will take care of Stubbs for the second time. Out on strikes again, missed the change. Two gone, two strikeouts following the home run. Now this is where Hellickson can be very effective with that changeup, his ability to throw it glove side to the right-handers. You're already more than likely to get a hitter out in front on the changeup. When you keep it away from them, not only are they out in front, but now they're way out in front because that ball's tracking away, and they miss it by a ton. Well, Janish takes a pitch away. He singles his first time. And missed that one by plenty out there. Now that's, that's what you're talking that's about. That's exactly right. I mean, think about it. When you throw a fastball out there, guys a lot of times pull off of it. That's why you get rollover ground balls and, you know, little ding chinks and pop ups. Take 10 miles an hour off that pitch, but they're way out in front. Two and one. And a strike with a fastball. Two and two. To Yanish is a, a teammate of the Rays, Jeff Neiman, on that the 2003 team at Rice University, that NCAA championship team. Three and two. Ground ball to third, and it gets away from Longoria, backed up by Brignac, but no play. And so. Longoria had a little trouble with a ground ball in the first inning. Commits an error here on the roller off the bat of the Cincinnati shortstop. Yeah, that's just a routine ground ball. You will not see that very often. Evan started to get his footwork going towards making the throw before he had secured the ball. So Yanish is aboard at first on the error. First one of the ball game tonight. Here's Fred Lewis, top of the order, up for the third time. And he lines a base hit, one hop through the right side. Yanish will go to third. The throws towards second, a single for Lewis. And now with two outs, the Reds threaten further. Fred Lewis continuing with that aggressive approach. He's not waiting around. He gets this change up right out over the plate, right on it. That ball was elevated. He saw it well. Like he knew it was coming. He rifled that ball. Giannis has to jump, get out of the way. And now here with two outs, the Reds, another opportunity. Brandon Phillips. High throw to first, corralled by Kochman. Came into the game hitting 291. He doubled in the first run. He followed a base hit by Lewis in the first with a double 
to center field. At third, Lewis at first. It's low, covered up by Jaso. One and one. The Reds have six hits, three runs. In the top of the fourth. The Rays have managed just one hit through three innings. And Hellickson, with the exception of the third, has had to try to pitch his way out of a couple jams, including here with two outs in the fourth. By drive into left, that's going to fall for a base hit. Yanni scores. Lewis stops at second. Phillips driving in his second run of the game, and it's four to nothing. Well, that innocuous error by Evan Longoria with two outs. Get Paul Yanish aboard, and the Reds have capitalized. Back to back hits. This change up down, but Brandon Phillips, a nice job of going down and getting that pitch. And he really rifles this out to left field. Reds tack on. It's going to bring uh, Jim Hickey, the Rays pitching coach, out of the dugout and to the mound. And one of those nights where the Reds jumped to a 2 0 lead and they've managed to score a couple more here in this inning. Well, it's the command. It's Jeremy Hellickson's command. He's just not locating. The fastball and changeup consistently. You'll see it. You'll see glimpses of it from time to time. We've seen a couple good changeups down and away to the righties, but a lot of pitches are staying out over the plate and very hittable. Now he has to face Joey Votto, who takes a vicious cut at that first pitch fastball, and, strike one. And that was one of them. I mean, that was a 90 mile an hour fastball that was right down the middle. Very fortunate that that swing. Didn't do some damage. Otto is lined to third and a fly ball into left field in the third, caught by Sam Fold. The shift is on. And he lifts a fly ball into left center. Fold and Upton, and it's going to be BJ to make the catch, retiring the side. Well, it was a home run by Johnny Gomes to start the fourth. And before the inning was over, the Reds had added another run and they lead 4 0 middle of the fourth. Bottom of the fourth inning. Let's take a quick look at tonight's Toyota inside look and compare what the Rays have done home and away. They're at the 500 mark, have not been over 500 at home all year. And look at the uh, runs per game. 5.2 on the road, 10 full games over 500, and 3.2 runs per game at home. And uh, this game, we're seeing signs of the same thing. It's really hard to explain because this is a building not easy for visitors to come play in. Want to know the count to Ben Zobras? Well, that was one of the uh, the mantras that we heard from Joe Matt, making this place a positive force for the Rays. A decided home field advantage, but that has not been the case this year. And yet you go out on a road from hotel to hotel, city to city, and they play great baseball. Bouncing ball out to second. Phillips with an underhanded toss, and Zobris is the first out in the bottom of the fourth. And really, you're getting to the point now that the sample size is large enough that you would have expected those numbers. Obviously, the team got off to a terrible start, lost their first you know, 0 for home, the first home stand to go out on the road, and you know, there was some disparity there because there was nothing going on with the offense at that point, but you figured that that gap would start to close down a little bit, but here you are approaching the All-Star break, and it's still pretty wide margin, the difference. Kevin Longoria. And the pitch is a strike. You know, and Joe Madden through the early part of the year said he just couldn't figure it out. He, I mean, Joe figures a lot of things out. But he was stumped by this, and, and I think that's still uh, 
pretty much the case. Doria bounces one to third. Scott Rowland handles that. So two outs. And let's see what Todd's thinking about this. Todd? The disparity is so great, guys, that if the Rays get shut out 27 consecutive times on the road, they'll still have a higher average per game on the road than at home. So that's the difference, how big it is. And that, I, Todd spent his entire flight back from Houston figuring that out last night. Yeah, this but guy's I, working all the time. And I'm going to tell you that that tidbit right there was worth it. 27 yeah. straight <laughs> shutouts? I mean, that's hard to imagine. I saw him. He was, like, wadding up pieces of paper and throwing that one out, scribbling that one about 25 well, that, times. I yeah. thought it was just snowing on the plane. Yeah. 25 shutouts in a row. Cross it out. Throw it away. 26. Let's see if that works. 27 would be the magic number. There's a base hit. Up the right side by Joyce, back toward the corner, bobbled by Bruce. Joyce was on his way to second, and he will stop there as Bruce recovered. So Matt Joyce comes up with the second raise hit. A two-base hit, his 18th double of the year. Now, the way that this game is going, I really believe the Rays got to take advantage of this. This is a cutter that doesn't quite get in enough, and Matt Joyce is able to barrel that ball and get it down into the corner. Leak one of that pitch in another couple of inches. So here is Casey Kochman. Well, you got to chip into that lead right here. Send a message that you're not. The pitch is down. One ball and no strikes. Kochman, one of the three strikeouts posted by Leak tonight. The only one swinging. High. Two and oh. Trying to break through and get into the scoring column. Couchman takes ball three outside. Boy, for a guy who for a long time had that eye issue and he said it appeared as if he were looking through a dirty windshield. Couchman makes great contact and he tracks this one low for a ball and he draws the wall. First and second now with two outs. They have pretty good eyes to take that pitch. And that's ball four, but that was a, a good pitch. It was a good pitch and could have gone either way, but in a 3-0 count, you're looking for your pitch. More than likely, hitters, they're looking for that fastball out over the plate where they can really drive it. Yeah, that's that wasn't why. worth swinging at. You'll take no, that that's to go why three he, more. Absolutely. That's yeah. why he took it. But the point on that being a good pitch is that the umpire called it a strike or called it a ball instead of a strike. And here's a pop up. Going to be handled by Phillips. And that retires the side. No runs. Two men left for the Rays. They do not score in trail. Time for our AT&T trivia question. What would be Tampa Bay's best all-time interleague record in a single season? Rays have been playing very well this year. And our AT&T trivia question, what's the best they've had in a single season? Right now, the Rays have the best interleague record for the year, 9-3. and three, with The list of clubs at 8-4, and four, but the Rays... Coming off a five and one interleague road trip, nine and three this year. Scott Rowland fouls the fastball back. That's a strike. Rowland has struck out and grounded out the third his first time. Takes a quick cut, bounds it back. You know, Roland's been a strong hitter his entire career. He always reminded me of the pitching version of the Tom Seaver, you know, that drop and drive. 
Boy, this guy takes great cuts, and, and they are labor-intensive. <laughs> yes, he doesn't get cheated. He's a very strong, strong man with a power stroke. Very intense. Ball, two strikes. But you're right. He drops right down there, and just quick with the hands. Very quick with the hands. Over 300 home runs. And how about for being such a big guy? Pretty good third baseman. I mean, this is the gold standard down there Absolutely. in the National League. And the out on strikes. A big cut at the changeup. That's the first out here in the fifth. Well, the one plus for Sheep, for Jeremy Hellickson, is when you get that quick hands and that big swing going, it's tough to hold up. And that's the one pitch that Hellickson has had pretty good command of is the change up down and away to the righty. You need to have that fastball follow suit if he wants to hang in this game much longer. The first pitch is by foul by Bruce out in front of a change up. Jay Bruce single in a run in the first. Grounded out to Zobris. Short right field his last time up. Opening this three game series against the Reds tonight. A night game tomorrow and a day game here on Wednesday. Braves will have Thursday off, and then the St. Louis Cardinals will come in. David Price against Johnny Cueto tomorrow night. Now, there is a good pitching matchup. The knees. One and two. Price and Quaid on tomorrow night. First pitch is set for 7 10. We'll be with you at 6 30 on Sun Sports. One two pitch. Speed pitch here by Jeremy Hellickson. He throws this curveball right over the plate. Just drops it below the zone. Well, seven strikeouts, four by changeup, and three by curveball. Those are his put away pitches. This one right here, Jay Bruce sees that as a ball out over the plate, down. He's got to protect. Good late depth. Closes him out. Now, Johnny Gomes. Pitch would happen to be a curveball off the uh, C ring, the third ring out from the center. The ball fell back onto the plate surface, but a, a ball hitting the C or D ring in fair territory is a home run. And for Gomes, that was his 11th home run of the year. And they're persistent. That also could be a target out there in deep left center. A 2 2. And a swing and a miss on a fastball. Hellickson strikes out the side. 1 2 3 go the Cincinnati Reds. 4 0 Reds. And National League. 
teams battling it out in interleague play, the Rays and the Reds. Speaking of interleague, let's get the answer to our AT&T trivia question, which is all about interleague play. What would be the Rays' best interleague record in a single season? They're 9-3 and three this year. They went 15-3 in 2004. They're down by four as they open the home half of the fifth tonight. John Jaso leads off of the pitch. Is outside. One ball, no strikes. For the Rays, winners in Houston yesterday. They used 21 players in that game and won 14 to 10. Courtesy of our statistician Rick Odioso, the only previous time that a Tampa Bay team won by a 14 to 10 score it was October 7, 2001, when the Bucks beat the Packers 14 to 10. Mike Allstott with. 39 yards for a touchdown in the fourth quarter of that one. And the Buccaneers beat the Packers 14 to 10. Well, that was the score for the Rays over Houston yesterday on the road. So with the uh, with the Rays winning that ball game yesterday, 14 to 10, using 21 players, uh, who uh, who played both ways? I know you had to have uh, yeah, you had to have at least one. 3-2 now. What was that, the third longest game in Houston Astro history for nine innings? For nine innings, yep. Jason grounds out. Take a look at the upcoming race schedule brought to you by Just for Men, our color. Hey, more interleague tomorrow night against the Reds. And then here on Wednesday afternoon, the Cardinals are in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the Rays, of course, hit the road again. Minnesota and New York. And yeah, this is a big stretch of ball games. This Cincinnati ball club can swing the bats. We've seen that already here in the early going. Sam Pohl thinking about trying to bunt his way on, and Scott Rowland already in at third. The St. Louis Cardinals coming in. They're looking to continue to fight and scratch to stay in the NL Central. Top of that. And the strike out starting play today. The Cardinals. We're running second behind Milwaukee, three out. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, four back. And then, of course, that road trip you're talking about, Dwayne, you go to Minnesota, they've kind of cooled off a little bit, but then right into New York for four right before the All-Star break. So this is a big couple of weeks here for the Rays. Yeah, the Twins, they were red hot. Now they've lost five in a row. Got hit with the injury bug again. You've got Justin Morneau's going to be out. Delman Young was injured the other day. They just cannot get their full squad out on the field healthy at once. So the Rays have these games left with the Reds and the Cardinals here at home. And as we look forward to the upcoming race schedule, and we do, <laughs> obviously, you can live forward with just for man hair color. Three and two the count to Sam Full. Ground ball chopped to second. It's Phillips and his throw to first. A couple of ground ball outs here in the fifth inning against Mike Leake. And that's when you know he's good. When he's having a good ball game, he'll get a ton of ground balls because, like we said, he's got the good sinker. He's got the cutter. He gets you reaching. Then he gets you trying to bring your hands in quick. When he's on, you just don't find a comfort level. You don't get a lot of extension. If you extend too far, he'll jam you. Well, he got two ground ball outs in the third. He got two ground ball outs in the fourth. And he has two ground ball outs here in the fifth inning already. And a foul ground ball off the bat of Brandyak. Strike one. You know, where he was throwing that cutter in on the lefties early in the game, he's starting to backdoor it a little bit, getting some rollovers that way. A little tap, first base side. That is a fair ball. Brignac racing by Leak. Leak tried to put the tag on him with that outstretched glove hand. And a little base hit by Brignac. Just fair. Dusty Baker wants to get a little closer explanation from Chad Fairchild. Well, he gets the slide here and then the reach back. 
you see Rid Brignac coming inside the baseline a little bit, trying to avoid the tag, the slide, and then the reach back for the tag. He misses him. Well, here's your get a get Brignac trying to get out of the way there. So Brignac is aboard. The Rays pick up their third hit. Here's Johnny David. Pitch inside. You know, it occurred to me that Baker might have been talking with uh, Fairchild about the uh, that runner's lane, you know, going up yeah. the first base line. But here's the deal on that. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure Fairchild said to him, if that was the conversation, he said, hey, he wasn't in the runner's lane. He said, yeah, but your pitcher was. <laughs> if he won't let him in there. He's got to go somewhere. What would you rather do? <laughs> exactly. You take a 40-foot uh, a base hitter, he can step right on your pitcher's back. <laughs> you name it. Over to first, and Rindyak is back in. Yeah, you see that play called sometimes when there's a throw down there. That runner was struck by a thrown ball, and he was not in the runner's lane. Well, then that's a different case. Two balls and a strike to count. Right there's the hard evidence of their leap sprawled across that first base line, including the runner's lane. Two balls, two strikes. Cincinnati scored a couple runs in the first. They added two runs in the fourth inning. The Rays have yet to score. The Rays have left three men on base, two in scoring position. Renyak back in. And here's the thing with Lee he can be quick to first. He has a couple pickoffs this year. Side. The Rays leave another man. We've completed five tonight at Tropicana Field. Opening game of the series, and the Reds lead the Rays 4 0. Subway, eat fresh. Coventry Healthcare of Florida, lighting the way to better health. And by Sonic, America's drive in. It's new, it's better, it's the new Sonic Good. Tropicana Field, this game moves into the sixth inning. 94 pitches for Helixson so far tonight. Here's Ramon Hernandez lifting a fly ball straight away center. He sent up and back to the wall in the second inning, not so far this time. And BJ makes the catch, one away. Drew Stubbs up here. A couple of strikeouts on the night. Swung and missed a curveball for strike three in the second. Missed a changeup for strike three in the fourth. There's a bunt and he pops it foul. That's going to be over the screen. Strikeouts and a walk. Four runs, three earned on seven hits allowed by Hellickson. Puck foul is going to be out of play. O two. Ramos busy in the bullpen now. 
for the Rays. Pitch is down. One ball, two strikes. You know, Stubbs has 321 at bats. He struck out 107 times. So that's one every three at bats. He's far ahead of the pace tonight. Two out of two. Yeah, that's going to skew our statistical <laughs> break out of that. We're going to have to get Todd on that to see what happens if he strikes out three times in 27 consecutive games. <laughs> what pace would he be on? Two and two the count to the Cincinnati center fielder. In the dirt, they lays off. Full count. How about that? Look at the strikeout leaders in the National League. They're running away with it. 107 strikeouts. This is Brignac in the throw to first. He beat the play. Stubbs has himself a base hit. Well, Reed. Reed he can Brignac. get down that line. Yes, he can. His closing speed was impressive because Reed Brignac did everything that he could. He made a nice throw. He got enough on it, as much as you could, putting his body in this position. But look at that. He closes, I mean, a long strider. That's some good hustle and some good speed. And a good call. West concurred. So here's the shortstop, Paul Yadish. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what makes Stubbs interesting. Here's a guy who has power, strikes out a ton, and he can fly. Well, he's done enough to impress. You continue to run him out there with that many strikeouts. Yeah, that speed was impressive because I thought Reed Brignac, the way that he ate, charged that ball, even though it was over in the hole in the backhand, he does a nice job of getting a lot on that throw in situations like that, and I thought that was going to be good enough, but Drew Stubbs with really closed into first base quickly. One ball, no strikes to the count. Liner into right. Joyce is there to make the catch. You know, that's one of the interesting things about interleague baseball. You know, and the, and the verdict is still out in that, in that conversation. Some fans love it, and some people just detest the idea of interleague baseball. But you do get a chance to see not only stars, but young players, and, uh, you know, Stubbs would be one. Now, it's an interesting combination of challenges and talents that he has because we can see right there he can fly. And I, and that's interesting to see that. Having said that, one of the problems I think with with the schedule, even inside your own league, is just those one and one series, and you're done. You know, I, I don't think you see enough of opposing players at home or on the road for fans really to get to know uh, what those players can and cannot do. And I think that's a that's a challenge with the way the schedule is set up today. Want to know the count to Fred Lewis? You know you'll get a team in here. You see Cincinnati, and who knows when you're going to see them again? But inside your own division, inside your own league, if they're out of your division, you know that's a two thirds of the, of the league that you're yeah. not going to get to know as well as you'd like to get to know them as a fan. One ball, no strikes. The count to Lewis. Two and all. And part of the, I think part of the allure and the and the fun of coming to the ballpark and following a team and a league is to have obviously your own opinion because baseball fans, sports fans across the border, and they're going to be opinionated. They're going to have uh, opinions about every player and manager and so forth. Just good to be able to see them more than one series a year in April, and then you never see them. Well, you can see him again next year for one series. Stubbs is safe. He got in there on the steal. 
That's his 23rd stolen base. So we see some more of his speed. 23rd stolen base, 26 attempts. He's very good picking his spots. And there's the sweep tag by Brignac. He tries to sell it. It comes up a little empty on that tag. A lot of times that's good enough. Not with Angel Hernandez. No, and he was so far in front of the bag and had to take the ball back that Hernandez is not going to give that to him. No. Two and one count to Lewis. Fouls pitch back. Two and two. Well, yeah, and going back to what you were talking about, you think Chicago White Sox, done. Yeah. Cleveland Indians, done. Sure. You know, that was early in the year when you were done with those two teams. You don't get a chance to see them nearly enough. And that you would hope would be in the discussion of potential realignment that they've talked about. You know, there were discussions about the Houston team going to the American League, talk about Arizona gladly going to the American League, and some discussion about the Rays going to the National League. Two and two, the count to Lewis. Rays pitchers are all for that. Oh, yeah, they love to swing those bats. <laughs> they do. Count holding it 2 2 on Fred Lewis. Bottom line is, any way they do it, it's, you know, like you said, a lot of opinions give and take. If you go back to that balanced schedule, then the people that love interleague, sorry about it. You want interleague, then you have the issues that you were just talking about. So. Two balls, two strikes, the count to Lewis. Stubbs in scoring position. This is another one of those situations in this game where, you know, right now it's four to nothing, and the Reds with that steal of second, moving a man into scoring position, trying to make it five to nothing. And with the Rays struggling to score runs at home, I mean, they're coming off this road trip where they just scored a ton of runs, but so far tonight through five, they've reverted back to uh, the problems they've had here at home with offense. Averaged almost seven runs a game on the road. Two, two. Swing and a miss. Lewis missed the fastball. Boom, a fastball up and got him. Bottom of the six coming. It's still 4 nothing. Looks for the double to center field. Scored Fred Lewis. Jay Bruce single home Phillips to make it 2 to nothing. Home run off the catwalk in the fourth inning struck by Johnny Gomes. The base hit by Phillips driving in his second run scored the shortstop Paul Yanish. Meanwhile, Mike Leak has not given the Rays much of an opportunity. They've stranded four. Two of those men in scoring position. He's given up three hits, a double to Zobrist, a double to Joyce, and an infield hit to Brignac. And here's Ben Zobris to open the bottom of the sixth inning. Taking a pitch too low. One ball and no strikes. And cues it. Foul. It's one and one. One walk allowed by Leak. That was in the fourth inning. With two outs, Joyce doubled, and then Coxman walked. That's really been it. Sobers picking up his 26th double of the year. And there's a shot headed toward the corner and right. It'll be one hop into the wall and a good carom by Bruce. The throw will not be in time and another two base hit for Ben Sobers. So lead off double and we'll see if that will get the race started. Three of their four hits doubles tonight. Well, third time through the lineup, coming right through the middle. A cutter that ends up right out over the heart of the plate. Ben Zobris, boy, nice swing on that. Hits a rocket shot into right field. A good carom there for Jay Bruce, but Ben Zobris 
Rays hustled all the way, gets in safely, and the Rays got something going here. 27 doubles for Zobris now. Adrian Gonzalez has 25. So Ben, two up on him. Devin Longoria takes a pitch inside. One ball, no strikes. and pitch count. And he misses low. Three and nothing the count. Joyce on deck. That good sinker down and away. The one that did not get called a strike on Casey Kotsman. Very similar pitch. It's called on Evan. And Evan takes ball four. So the Rays put the first two hitters on base. That double by Zobris, the first time the Rays have put the leadoff hitter aboard in any one inning. And now a walk follows to Longoria. Well, experience a Rays game from the all-inclusive Whitney Bank Club, offering extraordinary seating and luxurious lounge and dining areas. The Whitney Bank Club features an upscale full menu buffet and inclusive drink options. Call 888-FAN-RAYS or go to RaysBaseball.com to purchase tickets or for more information. It's the great thing about the Rays experience. There's always more. Sometimes much more. Yep. The intrigue of more. That's what makes it so much fun. And it's what keeps you coming back. And we always do. <laughs> Here's Matt Joyce. He shoots one foul. The Rays trying to do a little getting back into this game and maybe trying to pull a comeback themselves. Well, great opportunity here. First and second, nobody out. Starting to get towards that back end of the game. And you're right in the heart of the lineup. One and one the count. He's had a double his last time up. He had a pinch hit double in that wild game in Houston yesterday. Bounce it out of play. Straight back. It's one and two. You did see some action in the bullpen for Cincinnati. Sam LeCour is up. The Rays start to get a little action in their pen as well. prior Caesar Ramos and he's joined by JP Howell that's not something that you see very often two lefties warming up together in the bullpen you know when JP is right and he's coming back from that shoulder surgery there have been times when Madden would see him sometimes in that right handers role it's either lefties or righties Two to the count on Joyce. Pretty close right there, and that's ball three. Full count to Matt Joyce. Yeah, if that missed, that wasn't by much. Been hard down and in. Now you force him to throw a pitch out over the plate. Full count. Don't want to walk the bases loaded. 
Ben Joyce should see something pretty good to hit here. It came in the eighth leading hitter in the American League. Zobrist at second on the double. Longoria at first on the walk. Three and two the count to Matt Joyce. He bounces this one foul. So we'll see it again on three and two. We're in the sixth. Week worked six innings in his last outing against the Yankees. Gave up four runs on five hits in six innings. No runs, four hits so far tonight. And five plus. 3-2 again, and a foul ball. Right in behind the catcher, Hernandez, and the plate umpire, Chad Fairchild. Now he keeps trying to come in there with the slider, get Matt Joyce to swing over the top of it. There it is. It's a good look at it. Just not enough depth on that pitch. Didn't drop enough, and Matt Joyce is able to catch just the top part of the baseball and stay alive. goes to third and Longoria Longoria ran past Zobris and so he's going to be out and the Rays will lose an out and a base runner and here is another look Zobris going back to tag and Evan is still running runs right by him Angel Hernandez was all over that you see it right there the call boy oh boy well, a base running mistake by the Rays. And instead of having runners at least at first and third and one out, it's third base and two outs now. The Rays make a costly mistake. So Longoria passes Obris on the base paths. And what makes that perplexing is that ball, Evan Longoria, that's happening in front of him. He can see Fred Lewis getting to that ball. And a strike to Casey. Two and one. And a well hit ball into left center field. But. Uh, the Rays. Lose a big opportunity right there. Broken bat, a roller to second. Phillips with a pickup and a throw to first, and the Rays do not score. They leave only one. Trail four to nothing. Six, our text poll brought to you by Ottaway, who's Helixon's biggest competition for the American League Rookie of the Year. Mark Trumbo, Eric Cosmer, Michael Pineda, Zach Britton. Text your votes to 789-789. They turn it over to Cesar Ramos. And here's Joe Madden about how everybody has to contribute out of the bullpen. we got to get everybody uh, involved. Uh, if we're going to win this thing, which we plan on doing, we have to make sure that all the relief pitchers are involved. You just can't lay it on one or two guys. We've got to get Joel back. We've got to get J.P. pitching like he can. Cruiser's coming on a little bit right now. Russell's come on. We've got to get um, Cesar back to where he had been. Um, I have a lot of faith in all these guys, and I believe that they're going to pitch again at a very high standard this year. Sometimes you go through a bump in the road, and we, and we did, but we were able to weather it well. It's been a lot of Kyle Farnsworth on that recent road trip, and Joe looking for some other contributions. Gentlemen? Well, he's going to go to the bullpen here in the seventh inning. Cesar Ramos will get the call in relief of Jeremy Hellickson. Brandon Phillips leads off the inning. And the first pitch is a high fastball. And Ramos has had a, a little command issue and control problems lately. And you can see the bullpen on that road trip, not nearly what uh, 
Joe Madden's looking for. No, and that's why Joe said, hey, we're able to weather it. You know, they didn't pitch very well on the road, still went 5-1. and one. So that's very encouraging. But this is one of the guys you got to get back. And you're right, Dwayne. The command issues are coming from, and you don't know, it may be something, a little mechanical adjustment that needs to be made. But right now, Cesar Ramos is not letting that ball fly with conviction like he did early in the season where he just would rear back and let it fly almost like he's aiming the ball and he's losing velocity and command. Like that right there. I mean, that's a strike, fastball, 86 miles an hour. This is a guy we're used to seeing in the low 90s. Yep and standing tall and firing that ball with confidence. And right now, you're just seeing a guy who's almost playing darts, just trying to trying to get it there, throw a strike. Doesn't that have nearly the same stuff? Two and one, the count on a line drive into left. So a base hit for Phillips. And actually, what's alarming is unless the, uh, the radar gun is broke, is just the, the fact that the, the velocity is so far down. I mean, we've seen him in that 91 to 93 range. This pitch catching a lot of plate right out over the middle. Brandon Phillips just laces it. You just see, just almost like he's just aiming the ball in there. Not letting it fly. Joey Votto. <laughs> 92 on that. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, then let's go. And you know, sometimes, as, as you're well aware, you, you'll see that fluctuation because it turns out to be a mechanical issue. Oh, it's a foul ball hit him on the foot while he was still in the batter's box. And sometimes it's the reigning National League Most Valuable Player that will get that increase in velocity. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, it, it can be, but boy, these two, these last two pitches compared to the ones that he threw to Brandon Phillips, mm -hmm. I mean, much more aggressive with the body, with the arm. That's what you want out of Cesar Ramos. The ground ball, that's going to get through the other way. Base hit into left. Phillips stops at second, and Votto has a base hit against the lefty. Now taking advantage of the shift, you had Reed Brignac pulled way over up the middle. And this right here in your... He's trying to put the ball in play. There's Reed Brignac right here. And that ball has hit right to the shortstop position, but because of the shift, it's able to sneak out into left field. So the first two men are aboard. Scott Brolin, the right-handed hitting third baseman up here. Pitch is inside. Adam Russell is up in the Rays' bullpen. Hellickson gone after six innings. He made 110 pitches in this outing. There's Russell. Ball second base, and it gets away from Zobris and into center field. Phillips will score. Over to third base goes Votto. Roland is aboard on the air, and that was the double play ball the Rays were looking for. Instead, another run scores to make it five to nothing. Nobody out, and runners now at first and third. Well, there's nothing to say about this. I mean, this is a tailor-made double play ball that gets, not only does it, is it hit right at Ben Sobers, but it's able to sneak its way right between his legs and get out into the outfield. Just a complete whiff. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that as far as turning a double play. A little shuffle to Brignac. Two outs, you got a chance to get out of the inning. Here's Jay Bruce. He pops one to third. He's going to be caught by Longoria. It's the first out. So one away with men at first and third. Johnny Gomes is due, and Joe Madden comes out of the dugout. He's going to go for the right-hander. He wants Russell. We'll be back in a moment. First and third, one out. FoxSportsFlorida.com has the latest news surrounding all of your favorite Florida sports teams. 
Log on for post-game coverage of tonight's matchup. Read about Evan Longoria's resurgence and find a recap of the Gators in the College World Series. It's all on FoxSportsFlorida.com. Log on now. Here at the drop, the Rays are going to stop the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds have built a 5-0 lead. The Rays have committed a couple of errors in this game defensively. They both cost the Rays runs. Here's Johnny Gomes now to bat against Adam Russell with men at first and third and one out. The baseball is up. Ellickson gave up four runs, three earned on eight hits. He struck out nine and walked one and gave up the home run in the fourth inning to Gomes. 110 pitches for Ellickson tonight. This ball by him. Ellickson with nine strikeouts. He had ten strikeouts against the uh, Angels back on April the 6th. Nine tonight. But four runs, three earned. Oh, that one got him on the hand. Gomes hit on the hand, and the Rays think that it hit his bat. And uh, Madden's going to argue this point. Yeah, I think it did, too. That reaction from Johnny Gomes was a little bit late. And the way that the ball came off, if that was the hand, uh, I got to believe that the uh, conversation wouldn't be as, or that <laughs> I take those batting gloves off. Here you go. This will give you a great look. Right off the butt end of the bat. And then, then the reaction. He thought about it. It was a delayed reaction. That ball hit the bat. Yeah, look at his eyes. I mean, it's in his eyes. They don't lie. <laughs> yeah, it hit the. Uh, if that ball hit comes the knob off of the bat, if it hit his wrist and it came shooting off the bat that far, that thing would be in pieces. I mean, the way that the ball came off, that's not even questionable. If that was the uh, if that was the wrist, they'd be helping to pick that thing up right now. So the bases are going to be loaded on this. Gomes. Yeah, when if balls come off body parts with that kind of trajectory and that kind of speed, there's cast in them. Yeah, Ramon Hernandez takes a strike. Well, it's a force play at any base now. Looking at the positive. <laughs> I like it. Need something, not a whole lot to cheer about tonight if you're a race fan. One strike to count on Hernandez. Oh, and outside, 1-1. One, one. Hernandez 0 for 3, hit a couple fly balls to center, and that first one back in the second inning sent Upton all the way to the wall. Chop to short, Brignac will step on the bag, take his time, and throw to first to complete the double play. And with a force at any base, the Rays get the double play to get out of the inning. One run in for Cincinnati. Seventh inning stretch, and it's 5 nothing Cincinnati. Tropicana Field, this game so far has been all Cincinnati. The Rays committing a couple of errors, leading to a pair of unearned Cincinnati runs. Five runs, three earned. Ellickson worked six, gave up four, three earned. Ramos, a third of an inning, gave up one unearned. And now Sam LeCure will follow Mike Leak to the mound. After six innings of work by the Cincinnati starter. So 
Julian Lacour on for the 15th time. 27 year old right hander. BJ Upton will welcome him in. Swings and misses. Strike one, a slider to start Upton. Not a very nice welcome. That was a snappy little slider there with some good depth on it. Really good sweeping action all the way across the plate. Two. Jay coming off a very good road trip. And a three run home run in the first inning in Houston in the game yesterday, and that just set off all the scoring. Yeah, that was went on to win it 14 to 10. And that was smart hitting. 2 0 count against J.A. Happ, like you were talking about, Dwayne. Could only command the one pitch. And he sat on it, didn't miss. Away. One ball, two strikes. Leak worked six innings, gave up four hits, no runs. Struck out three and walked two. 99 pitches for Mike Leak. And strike three call. Upton takes the fastball. One away here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, lacure has got the fastball and he's got that sweeping slider. He's been going away with that slider and here he comes right to the top of the zone. And on the outside corner, and there's the ring out. It's John Jason. Pitch outside, one ball, no strikes. Slow, two and nothing. Raise trail, five nothing. Dodgers lead the Twins 5 0 in Minnesota. LA hitting in the fifth inning. It's 3 0. Tigers beat the Blue Jays 4 2. And the strike. Three and one. And that's a strike. So he comes back and runs the count full after falling behind three and all. Oh. University of Texas drafted in 05. There's a shot. A one hop the wall in the center, and Jaso has a two base hit. The Rays pick up hit number five tonight. Four have been doubles. Full count fastball that tails its way right back to the middle of the plate. Jason puts a nice swing on it. Gets a good carry over the head of Stubbs. Up and over the wall. Now Sam Bold against the right hand. Sam is grounded out to second base on two occasions. Great 
breaking ball and it's in there. Curve ball. Well, the Rays tried to get something going in the sixth and uh, literally ran their way out of it. Longoria passed Zobrist on the base paths. One ball, one strike. Recently off the disabled list and the strained right forearm. The ground ball to second. Phillips makes the play and over to third base goes Jaso. Two gone. As the Rays try to get on the board, it'll be up to Reed Brignac. Reed. The infield hit on the little dribbler up the first base side in the fifth. One for two. He's have left five men on base tonight through the first six innings. Jaso's at third right now, and there's a line drive right to the shortstop. That will retire the side. We're through seven. The Rays are down five. Nothing. Stuart Sternberg in the house today. He'll be around for the three-game series against the Cincinnati Reds. And beforehand, he was down on the field with Mayor Bob Buckhorn of the city of Tampa. There they are discussing things, and the Stu said, you know what? I better warm this guy up. He's throwing out the ceremonial first pitch, so he gets the catcher's mitt. And Mayor Buckhorn actually showed a really good arm. He threw a strike, a bullet strike to Elliot Johnson on the first pitch. And with Stuart Sternberg in town, we will catch up with him during tomorrow's telecast as he is here for the three-game series. Mayor Buckhorn with a ceremonial first pitch before the game. Gentlemen? Yeah, not only did he warm him up, but he put him through a little uh, infield practice, throwing him some ground balls, apparently. <laughs> Comebackers, you never know. Yeah, that's you got to be prepared. Well, hey, that's the name of the game with uh, the way the Rays run this operation. you got to be prepared for uh, almost anything. That's the way they've put the game on the field. Adam Russell out there now, the Rays third pitcher. He got the double play ball in the seventh inning. Facing Drew Stubbs here. Two balls, no strikes to count. Giannis to be next, and then Lewis. Two and one. It's been a frustrating night for the Rays offensively. They're all for seven with men in scoring position. They made that big base running error. Had a couple of errors defensively. Outside, it's three and one. Andy Sonnenstein starts to get loose down the right field line. Count is full. Mid 90s fastball and Stubbs took a rip. Well, Stubbs has struck out twice and reached on the infield hit. Stole a base. Ball that's going to be out of play. Five ten and zero for Cincinnati. Oh five and two for the Rays. And 
Ball four. Lead off walk here in the eighth. We'll start your weekend at Friday Fest presented by Captain Morgan on Friday, July the 1st when the Rays host the Cardinals. The first 10,000 fans will get a collectible Matt Joyce t-shirt presented by the St. Petersburg Times. Visit RaysBaseball.com to get your tickets now. Janish. Pitch is too low. Ball and no strikes. The Rays and the Cincinnati Reds again tomorrow night at a day game on Wednesday. And as we've uh, heard already, the Blue Jays lost to Detroit 4 to 2. County Peralta's triple in the eighth broke a 2 2 tie. The Rays keep an eye on. New York, they're going to entertain Milwaukee starting tomorrow. The Yankees and the Brewers. Rich and Yadish bounds it back, a fastball. It's now one and one. And Boston will be in Philadelphia tomorrow. That's going to be uh, Beckett and Lee. So a pretty good pitching match up there. Two balls and a strike. Helixson works six. Ramos a third. Russell got credit for two thirds of an inning. Pitched an inning yesterday. Runner takes off and a ground ball to third. And Goya looks it into the glove and now stubs hits to third and he is the throw back to Brignac covering the bag. Now Stubbs trying to use his speed and the element of surprise and the Rays actually wind up turning that into a double play. Throw back to Brignac covering the bag. Here's how it begins. Now the throw over to Kotsman and then he comes right off the bag with the bullet over to Reed Brignac and a nice job by Brignac being able to come up with that. Make the play on the one hopper and lay the tag. Well, this is the kind of play that we had seen on the road. And uh, frankly, the Rays had been a bit lethargic tonight. But this is the kind of uh, play that Joe Madden sees this team making. And that's the kind of play that you wish you'd have seen in the second or third inning tonight. Yeah. Get that dugout going. That's right. Get a little fire in their belly. Fred Lewis now strike to him. He sends a fly ball to the left. Bold is going to have to go back. Still going over the shoulder. He got it. Sam Bold over the shoulder. And then a slide on the warning track out there into the base of the wall. Well, Sam made another one. Interesting. Wow. What a catch. I mean, you thought that right there he cranks it up and over the shoulder like a wide receiver in arena football. The eighth, and Sam Fold does it again. Now well, Lewis puts a charge into this, and Sam Fold right there is where he finds it again. He gets a little bit turned around, finds it, and then cranks it up and makes an unbelievable over-the-shoulder catch before going into the wall. That's some good concentration and a great play. Johnny Damon will lead off the home half of the eighth, and he takes a curveball for a strike. As Heisey takes over in left for Cincinnati as this game moves into the bottom half of the eighth. It's one and one. Damon 0 for 3 tonight. Stubbs will go back, still back, and makes the catch 
got to the track and began to backpedal. Made the catch a couple steps from the wall. Johnny Davis, the first down in the eighth. Zeke worked six. LeCure worked the seventh. Gave up the double to Jaso. One out, and here's Ben Zobrist. And hits a roller over the mound. Shortstop Yonish takes care of it. So Ben is two for four. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, shift over there on Ben Zobris and Yonish able to come over there and make that play on the second base side of second base. Now Evan Longoria. Has popped out and grounded out. He walked in the sixth. Swings and misses. Strike one. And then in the sixth inning with Zobrist at second and Evan at first, Matt Joyce hit that fly ball back into left field that was eventually caught by Lewis. Zobrist is going to go back to tag and pitch up and in here to Lockmore and Evan. Zobrist around second base has been going back to tag. So the Rays lost an opportunity there. Well, this fastball just gets away from the cure. Hernandez wants that ball down and away and ends up up and in. And a fly ball lifted into left center field. Icy going back and is there in front of the 370 marker making the catch. The Rays are out. One, two, three. We go to the ninth. Five, nothing. Cincinnati. The cast is presented by the authority of the Tampa Bay Rays and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. Five to nothing. Cincinnati as this game moves into the ninth inning. Andy Sonnenstein will make an appearance, the fourth Rays pitcher. He's on for the 14th time. Brandon Phillips, who's had a very good night, he's three out of four. He's driven in two runs and has scored twice. And he leads off by taking the first pitch up and away. One ball and no strikes. Cincinnati Reds who came into this game having dropped six of their last nine. Ground ball and another base hit. Phillips with a four hit night. He is four for five. The Reds have pretty much dominated this game. Now they put a man on with nobody out. Get in on the action with exclusive on field seating in the Papa John's bullpen box. Available dates are going fast. Swag now to make your private group reservation behind the Rays bullpen by calling 888-FAN-RAYS. Or you can go online at RaysBaseball.com. Joey Votto, one for four. Which is high. One ball, no strikes. Votto's hit came in the seventh inning. knees and the Rays everybody shaded to the right side Longoria is still on the shortstop side of second base but he's shaded up the middle just handing him the entire almost the entire left side of the infield and a bouncing ball that's Kochman out at second and back to Sonnenstein out at first the Rays turn the double play. That's a 
Double play, 3-5-1. Longoria over there to cover the bag. Started by Kochman. Longoria in the middle and Schottenstein on the backside. Well, rolled over and Joey Votto is not running out of the box at all. That's what allows the Rays to turn this quite easily. Kochman has to come get it, gets it to Longoria. Plenty of time. Scott Rowland one strike the count pop foul it's going to be back and out of play nothing in two Phillips, who had opened with a base hit, he raced on the double play. Two strikes to count. That hit by Phillips, as we mentioned, his fourth, and that equals a career high. First time he's done it this year, the ninth time in his career. Five eleven and zero now for Cincinnati. 5 and 2 for the Reds. There's Brandon Phillips. And a chopper by the mound to second. Zobrich handles it. And the Reds are out of the ninth inning with a hit. Nobody left in a double play in the mix. Bottom of the ninth coming. Raised down by five. All tonight brought to you by your local Southern Ford dealers. By Checkers. Feast on. And by Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. When cancer strikes, strike back with CyberKnife and Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. We go to the bottom of the ninth here in the opening game of this series. Rays are down five to nothing. They've stranded six men tonight. And Nick Massett out of St. Petersburg. Takes over. He becomes the fourth, the third pitcher of the night, making his 39th appearance. And here's Joyce. Matt Joyce takes a pitch outside, a ball and no strikes. You can see Massett's got power stuff for a strikeout in inning. Massett originally drafted by the Texas Rangers. Saw some big league action with Texas and then with the Chicago White Sox. And now the Cincinnati Reds. And there's a strike. Fastball in the mid 90s. Didn't take him long to hit that spot. He was in 82 games last year with Cincinnati. He's well on that pace this year. Three and one. They've been an important part of their bullpen the last couple of years. You see what makes Masson impressive is not only the velocity, but how about that late movement on that fastball? 95 miles an hour with that kind of sink and run. Three two. And a liner that's going to be a fair ball and head back into the right field corner. Bruce will have to go get it. Joyce has another double. That's his second two base hit tonight. Have you ever seen a team with so many doubles in a ball game that hasn't scored? I'll tell you, the Rays now with six hits. Zobrist has two doubles. Joyce has two doubles. Jaso has a double, and the only hit that wasn't a double was that little squibber for an infield hit for Brignac. Still looking for their first run, but Matt Joyce, maybe this is the inning, gets something going, a pitch out over the plate, shoots it down into the corner. Now Casey Kochman. Casey's over two with a walk. Swing and a miss. Well, that pitch had some uh, good action down on it. A little off speed. 
change up, split action. Five, six miles an hour off the fastball. Total number back to the mound. Massage throw to first, and that takes care of Kochman. The old Joyce at second. Francisco Cordero down there. Right now, he's sort of leisurely spending his time on the bullpen mound. Runner at second with one out. B.J. Upton will be the hitter. B.J. lines it into left. It's going to be caught by the left fielder, Heisey. So two outs. And the Rays one out away from being shut out. John Jaso will be the hitter. The Rays have been shut out five times this year. Baltimore twice, Texas once, Seattle once, and Boston, the most recent on the Beckett one hitter. There's a foul ball, and that moves George Hendrick out of the uh, line of fire. Strike one. Beckett beat the Rays three to nothing on one hit on the 15th of June. The Rays have been shut out four times in June. Starting with the, the first day of June in the Texas series, when uh, Lewis and Police shut them out three to nothing on five hits. And that's strike two. So now they're one out and one strike away from being shut out for the fifth time this month and the sixth time all year. So fouls it away. Six raised hits, no runs. scoring position tonight. Well, that's exactly how you have that many doubles in a ball game and not score. Mike Leak, the right-hander, pitch six. Sam McCure, two. Nick Massett out there working the night. Ground ball to the right side. Votto is going to handle it by himself, and this game is over. The Rays are shut out on six hits. Took two hours and 52 minutes to play this game. Leak will get the win. His record goes to seven and four. Hellickson will be the losing pitcher, dropping his record to seven wins and seven losses before 19,891. So it's a 5-0 final. Cincinnati takes the first game of the three-game series. The Rays now nine games over 500. They'll drop a half game back of both New York and Boston, one and two. And the Rays continue to run third in the AL East. Now for Brad Anderson and Todd Callis. Hope you've enjoyed the telecast, if not the outcome. See you next on Rays Live.